it has to be truly effective we need we need to move beyond individual behaviors and create a culture of empathy organizations will have to play an active role in creating this culture of empathy this is interesting right suman i think uh, we talk about empathy a lot uh, it's one of those and i want to say it in quotes buzzwords almost right and um, uh, you know i i've read so many articles where there are uh, you know empathy is linked to trust empathy is linked to better culture in organizations better relationships better leadership so on and so forth right, right. so absolutely do not question uh, you know a building a culture of empathy have i missed out anything and hi nandini glad to see you joined us as well um feel free to jump in at any point in the conversation and uh, uh, you know give us your inputs as well so suman what else have i missed why is it important for a, to build a culture of empathy Okay, I love that question because it is a why question, right? Uh, I think uh, that's critical, and we all need to build conviction based on that. So, a couple of data points. So, studies show that empathy is more important to a successful business today than ever before. Yeah, thanks to the book, a world, the kind of change and the pace of change that we're going through, and it correlates to growth, productivity, even earnings per employee. I've actually talked extensively about this in my book uh, from command to empathy. To objectively study the impact of empathy, they have created something called a global empathy index. And what they've done in that is they've broken down empathy into different categories. And it's interesting those categories, right? Uh they talk about ethics, leadership in the company, what the company culture is, what kind of brand perception is there for that company. even things like what kind of social media uh, messaging are they giving out right and the latest one is of course ecological footprint now using this global empathy index uh, they did a study a harvard business study found that the top 10 companies okay increased in value more than twice as much as the bottom 10 and generated 50% more earnings the correlation between departments with high empathy and those with high performance was a staggering 80% i think so overall of course i definitely agree with what suman has said um in terms of how organizations are today um i feel like like what you said earlier about it being a buzzword divya um i think that's that's how companies are currently viewing it but what we but in my opinion what we require is a deeper dialogue around what empathy means in the framework of an organization and uh, what do employees as well as the um you know the leaders of the organization come to a consensus about how to build that culture of empathy and as for uh, building any kind of culture in an organization it requires um it requires understanding mutually between uh, all the stakeholders involved so once there is that understanding of what empathy in that particular organization stands for it could either be the way that um you know employees are uh the way that employees are given something as simple as the way that employees are given instructions or uh, you know the way that policies interact with this culture of empathy um or how leave policies and uh, situations like that are handled so i think if that definition of what empathy means for that particular organization is defined first then it becomes easier to build from there absolutely nandini i can't agree more it is a buzzword uh it definitely needs a deeper dialogue and it's not an easy task right and i think we need to demystify it in fact in that question in that statement itself there are two words which require demystification the culture word as well as the empathy part i agree um i think that nandini and and the the saddest part is because it's a buzzword if we start uh, ignoring it right because we all understand the actual role that it has to play in an organization and in an organization culture right yeah. and like you said um you know kind of engineering or designing it almost but more you want to jump yes divya thanks so much for that um so i have to kind of uh, disagree with you guys a little bit on the aspect that it's not just a buzzword 
it's absolutely something that organizations do put into practice. And it's something that I have seen, um, at least here in Australia. And fair enough that I might have been lucky enough to have worked for organizations where empathy was more than a buzzword, where equity was more than just a buzzword. And they were actually practicing what they preach. Um, and even the organization that I am currently in, I mean, we're a software company. We're trying to get big. We're not huge. And even then, you know, like I, I can see that culture of empathy. I mean, the CEO on the very first day that it seemed like Russia was going to invade Russia, he he requested that HR do a daily welfare check on the Ukraine team. Most of our Ukrainian team members are actually contractors. They're not even on our payroll. But even then, you know, like our company organized uh, a fundraiser for them um, and we were able to send them around $10,000 as, as, as a start, you know, like, here you go. Um, they have time off. We can't question them. We can't force them to work or do anything. Um, it's more than a buzzword. It's, it's difficult. It's hard to put it into practice. But I think that's the heart that seems to be missing from a lot of the corporate world. And if you just do that, you know, you'll see employee productivity goes up. Sure, you'll have that occasional, for the lack of a better term, dick, who's going to try and exploit this. And you have to deal with those people in an effective way. But the rest of your people who are loyal, who are hardworking, will actually work harder, will be more loyal, and would want to stay with the company a lot longer instead of just running off to the next Oh, no, I completely agree. I think I think when I said, so A, the danger of it being a buzzword, I said was that we would all ignore it and we can't, we can't afford to because it's true and, you know, it is, it has massive rep- implications on the company and the company culture, right? I completely agree with you. Um, um, Suman, throw back to you, uh, you know, you've been part of and you've been coaching organizations actively on empathy in India. Uh, where do you think we are, uh, you know, a lot of, and I know there's one or two that stand out, but where do you think we are largely, uh, you know, Indian companies in, in the empathy? Yeah, uh, good question. So the statistics I mentioned earlier is at a global level. Since you asked about India, uh, brace yourself for the real shocker. The same study found that based on publicly available data, Six of the 10 least empathetic companies in terms of the global empathy index actually are from India. And it's not as if low empathy values are, you know, limited to a particular industry or sector. These were large companies. They were almost giants, right? I'm not taking the names here. You can actually, it's publicly available data. You can go and check out. There was a brilliant HBR article on this. And these six giants spanned oil and gas, pharma, finance, you know, the entire spectrum, right? Uh, So, yes, we definitely have a long way to go, probably a little more so in India. I just want to also comment on what Mo said earlier. So, Mo, thanks for bringing your perspective. The way I I know what you said got me thinking also. Uh, I think buzzword is something which is like very frivolous. It's not anymore. But I keep telling this to people. When I wrote my book on command to empathy, from command to empathy way back in 2017, it was a good to have, right? Companies companies knew about it, but it was a good to have. I think what the pandemic did was to make turn it into a must have today. And you mentioned you've been fortunate enough to work in some companies. Yes, probably the data also says so. There is a cultural context, I agree. Uh, but you are definitely a, you know, if you have worked with some, com- some of those companies which have shown empathy, I would say you are probably uh, one of the fortunate ones. That's what I would have to say. Thanks, no. Suman. I, I'm so sorry, Divya. No, go ahead. I was just asking if you guys want to jump in. Right. Um, so, Suman, um, I, I, I appreciate what you just said. Um, I don't think I'm the outlier, though. I think it has a lot to do with the kind of culture you are sort of encouraged to follow and believe at a young age, you know, and that should come from your household, that should come from your schools, that should come from your universities and from your workplace. Um, Australia, and I was told this by a librarian at QUT because I couldn't find the book. And this, this lady, she's like, oh, you're an international student, aren't you? Have you been here long? I'm like, no, recently arrived, still learning about the country. And she's like, well, you're lucky you've come at this time. You know, we've had a major cultural shift. 
and was under one of the former Australian prime ministers. Before that, Australia used to be a lot meaner, apparently, is what she said. So I, I think it was a, a concerted effort by the politicians here to sort of create the kind of society that espouses Australian values, egalitarianism, fair dinkum, you know, fair go, essentially. Uh, everyone gets a fair shot at things. Um, and while, you know, living in Australia, I can tell that people complain about that too. It's definitely not as bad as India. And and I refuse to accept when people say it's just population. Yeah, population causes a lot of problems, but it's not just population. I think that's been an excuse for far too so i would i would tend to agree with what you're saying and there is a cultural angle to it i was generally talking at an overall level and it's great to hear that you know uh, things are definitely and it's a lot more cultural and probably things are better in australia so no 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 dispute there so i have a i have one um, thought right i mean so uh, is empathy does it uh, but into business goals, right? And are they always clashing? You would think that, uh, and this is kind of coming from Jaffer's question where he says, do they, do really big leaders even have the bandwidth, right? Um, so to be cutthroat businessmen, to kind of put your business above all else, uh, does empathy kind of play a spoil sport to it? Or, you know, are there examples where you do both really, really well, right? And it's just a thought. I wonder where it will take. Yeah, it's a good question because we often tend to think that empathy runs counter to the way things should operate in the corporate world, which is about uh, fierce competition. Uh, do we have the bandwidth, this, you know, too many balls in the air and this, you know, the, just the speed at which things are going. Well, empathy does not need to take away from bandwidth. And I, this is my favorite example. I say, are you connected with people at a personal level? So let's say, and now it's especially true with uh, with what's happening in the pandemic. Let's say that person has a situation. First of all, are you aware of it? Yeah. And if you are aware, are you checking on that? That's all it takes. It doesn't take much time. But what it essentially means is to move beyond a transactional uh, type of leadership to something which is more intimate. Now, I, and I can kind of see there are a lot of skeptics out there who feel that, see, I have become, I have become a big advocate for empathy. And I, for me also, it, it was like, a, I think I've spoken about this earlier. You know, I came from the corporate world, but it was very different. You know, I never looked at empathy at that point. The same way I look at it now. And so I have been one of the skeptics myself. What I wanted to say was that um, where does, so, as a lead, as uh, with my own experiences as a leader, uh, during the course of my career, I've had somewhat the converse uh, experience in the sense that um, I usually do tend to empathize quite a bit. And uh, sometimes, as Mo had mentioned earlier, there can be a certain person who might take advantage. Uh, how do how does one effectively navigate that? You know, how do you um, you know how do you draw the line between maintaining that empathy, not taking away from it, but at the same time, uh, being aware on how to kind of draw the line. Like a simple example would be, you know, everyone's been working from home for the past, uh, for the past two years. And uh, while most of us do have accountability and we work and we, you know, take care of whatever our responsibilities are as work, um, we there are people of course who take it who might take undue advantage of that you know not being in a physical space with your boss or your co-workers so how do you figure that out how do you um you know if someone says that they're unwell or someone says that something has come up or whatever how do you draw that line where you know you know where to say that the person needs to still figure a way out to do the work or you know, you need to kind of let it go and let them attend to whatever it is. 